A space maintainer is an appliance that is custom made by the dentist in acrylic or metal material. It can be either removable or cemented in a child's mouth. Its purpose is to keep the space open to allow the permanent tooth to erupt and come into place. Often, permanent molars will move into the space made by the tooth that has shedded early or that has been extracted. This results in lack of space for the permanent tooth to erupt and causes teeth to overlap. Preventive treatment helps to promote proper alignment of permanent teeth as well as aware the parents the need of early treatment where deciduous teeth not just being temporary ones but also being the deciding ones. Now, when is the space maintainer required? Space maintainer may not be required if there is existence of cuspal interference, widely spaced primary dentition, if succeeding tooth is expected to erupt within six months, where the opposing tooth which are the first molars do not come into the direct relationship with the bottom teeth. Indications for space maintainers are primary first molars, primary second molars or when there is multiple tooth loss. Furthermore, space maintainers are extremely important in case of premature loss of deciduous second molar. Hence, the priority criteria for the necessity of space maintenance is greatest in case of deciduous second molar and least for incisors. The decreasing sequence is therefore the second molar which is greater than the first molar which is greater than the canine and the least are the incisors. Now choosing the type of space maintainer is very important. The decision of the type does not only depend upon the parent or the child but also on the dentist who will recommend as well. For that you first need to know what the various options that you can give to the patient. Let's describe the various options currently used. Ban and loop. For years the standard universal appliance for unilateral space maintenance has been the band and loop. This consists of a band on the molar and a loop that engages the distal end of the tooth you are trying to hold. Usually it has a wire facing the mesial. In young patient where second molar has not erupted the wire is distal to maintain the space to avoid the mesial movement of the first permanent molar. Distal shoe. In some cases, where second deciduous molar is lost and first permanent molar hasn't erupted, band and loop cannot be placed. For such cases, because there is nothing to anchor the appliance to, distal shoe is placed. With the tip end to the tissue to provide as a guide of eruption for the first permanent molar. This appliance is called a distal shoe space maintainer or a distal extension space maintainer. It is used to prevent first permanent molars from moving measly with the premature loss of the second primary molars. The example shown is a crown with a distal extension segment soldered to the crown. The distal segment is extended into the tissue against the unerupted first permanent molar. The distal extension also called distal shoe is used when the second primary molars are lost prior to the eruption of the first permanent molars. Lingual arch space maintainer. This photograph shows an example of a fixed bilateral space maintainer. The patient is 4 years of age. The appliance is cemented on the two second primary molars. Fixed bilateral space maintainers on the mandibular arch 
often called the lingual arch space maintainers. Mandibular fixed bilateral space appliances generally are preferred by the clinicians over removable space maintainers as they can easily get lost. Nance button appliance. For the upper arch, many doctors prefer to use it as a bilateral space maintainer. It can be placed on either first permanent molars or second deciduous molars. Acrylic button is made on the palate as anchorage to prevent molar from drifting forward. Let's see how much you've learned in bilateral space maintenance. Which of the following is used? Nance button appliance, distal shoe, band and loop. None of the options are correct. Space maintainer may not be required if there is widely spaced primary dentition. The above statement is true or false. The de novo chairside space maintainer is a system designed to simplify and streamline the process of fabricating and installing a space maintainer. It's called a chairside system because it can be done in one visit. The procedure can be performed from start to finish in 20 to 25 minutes and with more experience as low as 10 to 15 minutes. The use of the de novo chairside space maintainer eliminates the problems of tooth drift between visits and potential no-shows by your patient. The bands are easy to install. If you know how to install a GP molar band, you can install a chairside space maintainer band. All of the components needed to fabricate the appliance chairside are included in the de novo space maintainer kit except for band cement. Any glass ionomer can be used for cementing the bands. The cost savings compared to lab fabricated devices are significant. In addition to our kit, we offer a series of tools designed specifically to aid you in the quick and efficient installation of our chairside space maintainer. Additional information can be found at the DeNovo dental website. Once you've extracted the tooth, you're going to determine the correct size band from the chairside maintainer kit for the tooth adjacent to the tooth that was extracted. Do a trial fitting to determine if the band is snug on the tooth. The kit comes with a range of sizes which should accommodate the large majority of cases. Using the de novo bite stick, have the patient bite down so it pushes down on all four cusps. If you need additional pushing, you can use manual pressure with the lightweight de novo band seater. The band seater has a serrated tip which minimizes slipping while exerting pressure to seat the band. This instrument can also be used to contour the band onto the occlusal shelf. In some cases, the band will need to be placed subgingivally. Once you have the correct fitting, you can remove the band using the de novo posterior band remover. Place the aluminum tip on the occlusal of the tooth and the arm just below the band on the buckle side. Closing the handles of the band remover will unseat the band while being captured by the arm. Now that you have the correct size band, you'll determine which wire is appropriate for this fitting. There are four types of wires which can be used with all de novo space maintainer bands or crowns. Plain wires, drop wires, occlusal rest wires, and distal shoe wires. Plain wires are the most commonly used wires. Advantages are their low cost and ability to adapt to a wide range of cases. The wire spans the space and abuts to the adjacent tooth. Plain wires are highly customizable, able to be bent and shaped to adapt to most clinical situations. The de novo drop wires can be used when the patient's permanent tooth has erupted and they've already lost their primary second molar. You don't want to use a straight wire that will potentially go down into the gum line. A better option is to place the drop wire which meets the tooth at the mid-crown surface of the adjacent tooth. The occlusal rest wire is used to provide more stability to the appliance. Patients who chew gum, ice, or hard candy, even though instructed not to, are perfect for this type of wire which holds up well to increased masticatory forces. 
The occlusal wire is manufactured with the occlusal rest going straight up. Once you have the band seated, bend the malleable occlusal rest wire over the occlusal ridge using the de novo band seater. If the wire is too long, cut to the appropriate length using the de novo wire shear. If the support tooth is not a permanent tooth, you can notch the top of the occlusal shelf using a 330 burr or similar to provide a slot for the occlusal rest wire. The occlusal rest wire is made out of Inconol, a soft metal that provides a comfortable bite for the patient. The distal shoe wire would be used in cases where the first permanent molar has not erupted and the patient has prematurely lost the second primary molar. Place the band on the first primary molar with the distal shoe blade pointing towards the gingival tissue and place the blade subgingivally sliding down the pre-erupted permanent molar. Take an x-ray for proper placement. Place the wire on the mesial of wherever that first permanent tooth is starting to form. The distal shoe will keep the permanent molar from tilting into the space left by the second primary molar. If you have a situation where the tubes are too long and touch or go past the adjacent molar, cut the tubes using a double-sided diamond disc burr with a straight, slow-speed handpiece. Insert the selected wire into the tube of the band. Place the band back on the tooth just enough to be sure the wire is at the proper length. If the wire is too long, remove the wire from the tube and trim the excess length using the de novo wire shear. Lay the wire flat into the slot on the shear and cut the wire on both sides to make the length as even as possible. Once you've made the cut, place the wire back into the tube and try it on the tooth again. If correct, place the band with the wire completely on the tooth and have the patient bite down using the de novo bite stick and seat the band. Check for gaps in between the wire and the tooth with an explorer, a condenser, or any hand instrument. If there is a gap, pull the wire outward until it is flush. Once you have made contact, use the de novo crimping plier to lightly crimp the wire to hold it in place. The de novo crimping plier has a little notch in the tip which will encircle the tube, allowing you to crimp all the way around the tube to hold the wire in place. Crimp the tube near the point where the wire enters the tube. Remove the band from the tooth with either the de novo crimping pliers or the de novo band remover if the band is too tight for easy removal. Perform the final hard crimp on both tubes. Use a firm and strong squeeze. It is not possible to over crimp the tube using the crimping plier. Once the crimp has been made, you may want to test the crimp by attempting to pull the wire out of the tube using finger pressure. If you want to put a curve into the wires before the band is cemented, use the de novo three-jaw plier. If the band needs to be expanded slightly so that it is flush, you can pull the wire out by inserting the tube crimping plier in between the band and the wire and opening the plier. Take care not to expand the wire too far as it may pull out completely. After you have adjusted the wire and before you cement to the tooth, check the wire for any sharp edges. If there are sharp edges, you can shave it down with a football diamond burr or a white stone. The de novo chairside space maintainer is ready to cement to the tooth with any glass ionomer cement. The de novo chairside space maintainer system is a complete line of products and tools designed to help you simplify and streamline the process of fabricating and installing a space maintainer in one visit. For more information, Please. Normally, as a permanent tooth comes in under a baby tooth, the roots of the baby tooth dissolve away and the permanent tooth replaces the baby tooth. In addition to being important for chewing, the baby tooth holds the adjacent teeth in place. When a baby tooth is lost early due to decay or injury, the adjacent teeth may drift together, causing loss of space in the dental arch. Fortunately, by placing a space maintainer, this loss of arch space can be prevented. It generally takes two appointments to complete a space maintainer. On the first appointment, orthodontic bands are carefully placed and an impression is taken. A duplicate model of the child's mouth is made from this impression so that the dental laboratory can custom make the space maintainer to the exact contours of the mouth. On the next appointment, the space maintainer is tried in. 
adjusted if necessary, and then cemented in place. Space maintainers are used until the permanent teeth begin to break through the gums. While wearing a space maintainer, it is important to avoid chewing gum, sticky candies, and hard foods like corn nuts or ice. Following up with periodic checks of the space maintainer here in our office will make sure it's still functioning properly and keeping all the teeth in their proper position.